Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. Joining me, as almost always, is Ian. Hey, I'm Weary Rider. Also joining me with a small table in the background is Evgeny. Hi, this is this is my coffee table where I have my laptop that's and, uh, and, and we're doing also- updates right now. And we're we're also both wearing blue shirts, so that's uh, blue stormlight shirts. So it's, it's great. And lastly, for the first time on a word of Brandon episode is Joshua. Hi, I'm Joshua. Yeah. Today, guys. Well, we we were gonna start with the Skyward tour words of Brandon, but Brandon did this thing where he did like a billion Reddit AMAs. It's like and like Instagram and Twitter and oh, everything. A little, can we, a little bit of Twitter. Can we complain about Instagram real quick while we have an audience? Ooh, That'd be great. Yes. Yes. Because Instagram that's, stories are stupid and not a good way to disseminate information to people. It was colorful. Do you see those backgrounds on the images? It was it was colorful. And Brandon didn't do those. We all know this. Brandon didn't do those at all. It's like, ah, yes, the way I'm going to interact with fans is things that expire in 24 hours. Brilliant. Well, no, I mean, it's like the hip celebrity thing to do, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. But I, I being approximately 82 with where my <laughs> knees hurt, I don't like things that are hip with the kids, okay? As established, Eric is Vasher and is just a grumpy old man. That's true. That, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate, though. Great. So we have about a billion of these. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you know what I should do? This is what I need to do. We need to tra- do a scene transition over here. Great. <laughs> because we're going to attempt to display the words of Brandon on screen. This is going to be okay. crazy. Well, Excellent. It won't matter for us recording because I'm doing it in post, but. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. It does sound yeah. like a lot of work. Yeah. Joy. Well, we're trying to make those video podcasts good for you guys. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. So, Joshua, why don't you start us off with a word of Brandon by some poser? I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, this guy's really weird. Looks yeah. like his name is Jay of Wu. Oh, yeah. also, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we do, we haven't talked about your... Uh, your your Christmas stockings. Oh, do you like my Christmas stockings? It's, yeah, they're re- uh, they're, they're brand really, new. They're really adorable. Stop Thank having you. such an adorable family. I know okay. these are for the these are for the baby. This is for the toddler and the and the actually I'm backwards. It's for my kids. Wow, you get your the kids' animals. names mixed up. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Way to go. They're pretty legit stockings too. They're like uh like up to your knee stockings. You know it's like know. that's the kind of like that's kind of stockings like my sister and I and I have. It's like they're so good. You can fit so much stuff in them. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. We're a, a, as Americans, we're we're very interested in the commercial aspects of Christmas. I would like to point out that the whole stocking thing is really weird to <laughs> people who don't do the stocking thing. Look, sometimes Santa puts coal in your stocking. That's yeah. a thing that happens. Okay. But you, you guys, you guys also do the Christmas thing where the presents are under the tree, right? Yeah, we do both. Yeah. 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 You can but never have see, too many presents. Yeah. For <laughs> my family, at you least, never... my sister and I would wake up before my parents, and we we were allowed to open up our stockings. Yeah, that was me too. Yeah, yeah, right. But not the presents under yep. the tree, which yep. are usually more significant. Yes. The stocking doesn't have good presents in it. They have lame presents in it. You know, I, mean, I, I should have expected like this country to have a free present Look, Present. that's so the parents can sleep in past, like, early <laughs> o'clock when the kids are excited about Christmas. There, There is a logic to that. He just doesn't like giving presents to people. Yeah, he's just mean and he, he's a Grinch. Uh, theoretically, I, this podcast will be out uh, the week of Christmas, but, uh, you know, thing, things might be adjusted. Um, so this is my question. This is OK. So this is the Skyward pre-release AMA. And I was trying to, like, get a Cosmere question in uh, without sounding completely off topic and so uh, i asked getting uh, a cosmere question in. yeah well a lot of people ask cosmere questions as we yeah. quickly realized after yeah, turns, out, turns out if the book is not out and you're doing an ama for it 
you can't ask yeah. that many questions about the book. Yeah. No matter how many sample chapters you give. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, um, any thoughts on whether Skadrian spaceships might have AI on board? Um, and Brandon says, um, AI in the Cosmere will be an important topic I'll address in the future. So. Uh, later in this, uh, of, well, not this event, but in the 40 pages of words of Brandon that I pasted into our doc, someone asked uh, whether an AI could attract a spren, and Brandon was just saying, ah, oh, you know, AI, all these questions I'm going to explore later. So, I mean, it's I imagine surprising. we will see this. Mm -hmm. So buckle up, and we'll see you guys in 30 years. Will Kelsey or go to the virtual world? <laughs> will we will he be, he'll, will he be downloaded into a computer after his hemology body was uh destroyed by someone and then he goes into the virtual world and then we have to like uh go into the virtual world and uh play a card game with him? Is that is that how that works? I think that's card how game? that works. Yeah. Okay. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, when you go into the virtual world and it doesn't make any oh, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. No. I next question. Up. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is a long question. Yep. But the gist of it is that Brandon says book five of Stormlight will have a lot of Dalinar. And once it's out, you'll be able to see why it could have been a Bondsmith book. Um he thinks it works better that way with, with book three being the punishment. So originally, book three was not going to be Dalinar's book. Which is insane to think about. Which, yeah. Now, <laughs> like, now that we've read Oathbringer, how could this not be Dalinar's? Right. Uh, it was going to be Zet's, right? Yeah. Stones and Hulk. And it's like, you can see how it could have been Seth's book, but I can't see how it could not have been yeah. Dalinar. Yeah. Uh, and so Brandon did some shuffling around and... Dalinar obviously became book three, and Zeth is now book five. And so because he was able to do that switch, people were wondering, well, how, how is book five also going to be so Dalinar-focused? And, and that's what Brandon is addressing here. That, that's when um, Dalinar unites every planet, and not just the three realms, but all the planets come together, and then he really unites every... Uh, no? No? Okay. Black hole. Yeah, and makes a black hole, and then... And then something, kicks something, Odium. Something, something Vivena. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, later on in the question, Brandon continues to say that now that book four may see less of him as he steps back a little, uh, like each of the characters do every now and then, but book five has him as a focus again. Yeah. Which we did see him take a step back in Words of Radiance. Quite a big step there, back, yeah. Yeah. So... I, I kind of like that symmetry. It's like, ah, book two and book four, less down are. The odd number ones, more down are. Sure. So this next question is by, like, some complete pleb named Argent Sun. Argent Suni? Ar Argentina. <laughs> yeah, Argentina. The son, the son of Argentina. Yes. Also known as the guy who just went. When was Silverlight founded relative to the stories of the currently published books? Brandon, Silverlight is much earlier than the current books, at least in its very first form. So we're talking like Oathbringer style? Like that, that's, that's when our anchor is here, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. For uh, Stormlight, Stormlight uh, Era 2, that kind of... Yeah. That's kind of interesting, though, that it's so much older, you know? And not only is it so much older, it has gone through, I, it, at least in my head, like major iterations. So it could have started off as just a settlement, and now it could be like a full-blown, sure. if not city, then, a, then a, like a university campus. Yeah. Although the universities of Silverlight are not the only feature of Silverlight. Yeah, so probably both. Yeah, it, it's... New York City when it was New Amsterdam versus now where it's sure yeah yeah a world metropolis I think you mean a shades more metropolis or oh I'm sorry Ian a cognitive metropolis 
Shades Shades <laughs> Tropolis. Sage Tropolis. What a mouthful. Ideas okay. for you, Brandon. Just words for you. There is there is probably a play on word where you can take Metropolis and substitute one of these with something related Metro Mar. To- Metro Mar. That just sounds like a Pokemon. No. <laughs> what? Metro Mar. No. No, like you, you probably want to keep the polis because that's Greek for city. And then instead of metro, you can do cog, cog, no. Cogpolis. <laughs> metro Mar is, uh, is another Magmar evolution. Uh, I feel like Metropolis still works in this context. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> this next one is from Jenna Bakken. I think uh, Shalosh will be having back five flashback POVs. In Upbringer, you seem to portray her as pre-shattering. For example, O Adenalsium and referring to Hoid as Midius. Will later Stormlight books focus on pre-shattering stuff at all, or will we have to wait for Dragonsteel for that? Brandon, there will be more of a pre-shattering focus, but not as much as you're probably hoping. <laughs> Which, I mean... That's an answer that is trivially true, because we're hoping for so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, that's, that's true. An I mean, we're hoping two, for everything, so... An, uh, yikes. An episode or two from now, we are going to get a massive bombshell about the Heralds and stuff, but I'm still not sure how they, like, how pre-shattering they were. Like, that's still kind of weird to me. Yeah. The whole timeline. I get the feeling that they're the society they were born to is pre-shattering. So there's... It's just so weird to me. They would know more than Scadrians, obviously. I guess. Guys, I mean, humans... You guys are spoiling... You guys are yeah, spoiling I know. Future yeah, episodes. This, this is spoilers for, for another episode where I'm going to title the podcast about this Herald thing. So. Shardcast spoilers. <laughs> Shardcast yeah, spoilers. Spoilers for Shardcast episode 57. Next question is Jenna back in again. Can we say bacon? Jenna bacon? That is I would go back in. I mean, you could, but it's probably wrong. Well, See, the best thing case. is that it's being displayed on screen, so we can have a more pronunciation discussion about people's Reddit usernames. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in any, in any case, they say by the time of six of the dusk are the ones above indisputably the most technologically advanced society in the Cosmere. And Brandon says, no, they aren't. Uh, there has been some concurrent development and a lot of sharing technology at the point you could at that, at the point that you could make an argument of several societies being equal, though, some better in specific areas. That so, is really cool to me. Yeah. Yes. It is also the kind of thing you would expect to see. I feel like well, that's also true. You know? Yeah, in a in a in a universe where faster than light travel is possible, you would expect different societies on a similar technological level to kind of plateau together, yeah. and then just different different cultures have are better at different things than others. Well, it's especially the fact that they're connected by the cognitive realm. Like, there's already a lot of interaction going on, so it's hard to imagine one of them really leaping forward without the others following along. I guess that's like, true. Right, yeah. yeah. They're, yeah they're, you can only unless, get so far Unless ahead. some autonomy well, shenanigans. Or like shards having a vested interest in that stuff or something. Like, that could be true as well. Yeah. Yep. Blocking well, access to a planet or something. I don't know. The reason People, I like this, word of Brandon, is it implies that just because Miss Bo- uh, Scadriel is confirmed to get space travel doesn't mean other planets aren't going to get space travel so that does not mean the ones are ones above are definitely scadrians that's true which i don't think they are that's fair or i don't like that idea yeah brendan you, you has have always said that. that it could be different yeah. yeah but this this makes me even more excited for era four because then we could have like Ah, oh, the Skadrian spaceships are fighting the Rosharan spaceships. It's like, yes, give me that, or just anything like that, where like we see that and like, oh yeah, we're we're Skadrians. Our main characters are Skadrian, and then just like some fleet from some other planet comes, and, like, yeah, give me this. This is awesome. Yeah, because in in a lot of sci-fi, 
one of the it's not a trope but it's a thing that happens a lot is you have the the main characters you have the protagonists that come from a place we are familiar with whether that is earth whether it's detritus um and they go to a place where they they meet other people or they encounter aliens or they encounter other cultures but that those other cultures are from an unfamiliar place exactly. that we don't know anything about and we explore along with the main characters what that other place is and what those other people are but in the cosmere we may get to a point where we know the familiar and we also know the strange but our main characters don't yeah doesn't that sound awesome oh no that, that's great uh, or it could be incredibly frustrating as it's like those guys well, are so, so cool why you? are you yes. fighting them i <laughs> No, I think it's more cool because I like the stories you you have, you know, ah, this is my main group for the first book. And then in the second book, we follow the villains and it's like, and then they're, they're fighting the protagonist from the first book. Oh, yeah, that's so much fun. I think that's going to be great. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's move on, shall we? Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Continue. I'm just, I just read this for the Brandon, so. Uh, our next question comes from Vanahian. Vanayan? This is the problem with Reddit events, is that we have everyone's name. And like, <laughs> how do we pronounce these? Um, and for a friend of mine and her sanity, the Shaladin <laughs> thing will be something, or is all, or is it all in her head? Stop her pain, please. Oh, Brandon. Shalan has made her choice. I wouldn't expect that to change, says Brandon. And thanks for the answer in 11. My friend is crying, but now she can go ahead with her life. Smile. And Brandon says, if it's any comfort, tell her I think she'll eventually be very pleased it went this way. It might take a few of our books, though. Hopefully. Oh, there was more to that. Whoops. Yes. We're very pro on Jarcast. It's not like we've done many of these. Well, we've done a fair few. We've, we've done professionals. Well. Free content. Thanks, Brandon, for talking and giving us content. Yeah, I mean. The screams I, I of know, a thousand dying shippers. I, I know there <laughs> is still a, a similar contingent who's holding out, but I, I would say this pretty well uh, puts a nail in the coffin. She's made her I mean, choice. I mean, I think the, I guess... The argument would be that, well, she's made her choice, but, oh, you know, circumstances changed or, you know, to where something different happens. And Adolin dies. I mean, if Adolin she's dies. Sure. You know. I mean, I don't I don't really expect that to happen for narrative reasons, but. Yeah. And you can always ship Shaladin, whether it's canon or not. So, yeah. 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 You can ship whatever you want. That's right. And there is the disclaimer that. The questioner's friend will eventually be very pleased it went this way. Yeah. Uh, so that could be either because Kaladin finds a better match elsewhere. <clears throat> elsewhere. Uh, yeah. It could be that Adolin turns more kaladin e in the future. And, and so Shalan and Adolin now look more like Vale and Kaladin. I don't think I would like that. I don't either, but I'm just exploring possibilities. We're, 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 we're also people who tend to like Adolin. Yeah. And ty typically people uh, who don't like Adolin didn't like how it ended up with, how, yeah. how things ended up. And if you liked Adolin, you tended to like it more. But Let's not open that can of worms. Nope, nope, let's yes. not ever. Well, yeah, let's, let's not open the can of worms. So Great. Next question was asked by Skylar Cecil. Thank you for having an easy name to pronounce. Yep. Is there an investor cycle on Roshar? Cycling through the crab rain and flora and fauna back into the storm or something like that? Like the water cycle. If investiture is finite, is it recycled back into the cosmere when investiture like breath or stormlight is expended? Otherwise, would an investor run out? Brandon. Yes, there is such a cycle. It is renewed and changed time and time again. It gets in and out of the spiritual realm 
often with the birth of new individuals. So I think that's cool. Okay. Yeah. It reaffirms a lot of things he said in the past. Yep. Mm-hmm. And makes sense with, like, you know, the well renewing and ver- various things like that, like being the cycle. Yep. But often with the birth of new individuals is kind of neat. Yeah, yeah because the he's mentioned before that when a person is born, they draw in investiture to create their spirit web, their soul. Oh, right. Well, right. when a person is conceived. Okay, yes. Great. <laughs> Let's just move on from that. Another can of worms. We're yeah, the no, Brandon. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. Yes. In the Cosmere. No, I know, I know, I know. Turnbar ninety seven asks, "Will there ever be a point in your books where different or all types of investitures clash?" Double question mark. What I mean, will there be a fight between people of different kinds of investiture, or will there be a team composed of such people? Brandon, yes, this will happen. Look for the future of the Cosmere to be about interaction of ideologies, magics, and settings. It's less about an avenger style team up and more about the clash between cultures. Which I'm like, I'm in. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah. I would like to point out I have seen that question and that answer so many times in the last like month and a half. The phrase interactions of ideologies, magics, and culture, like Brandon is copy pasting that thing <laughs> everywhere. Well, I'm sure people will. A- I'm sure people, as they get more excited about connected universes, ask this a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. At least he doesn't think have to think about the answer every time it's asked. Yeah, he's just oh, like, yeah. okay, yeah. this is what I say to this question. This yep. is this is now this is now an FAQ type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So the next question is Athos four five six seven eight. Has anyone in the history of Rashar ever had Lyft's special physiology, or is she like a whole new human? Brandon says, you could say anyone that has her DNA, uh, has their DNA or spirit web meddled with by the Night Watcher is something new. That said, Lyft is an experiment that hasn't been tried before. Interesting. So, Which is not, interesting. Yeah. Lyft's new. That's, that is very interesting. It's not surprising to me, but... Um, it's, it's not cer- surprising either. Certainly yeah. interesting. Yeah. She's unique in that way. Yeah. I guess interesting but not surprising is is a good way to describe this one. We have yeah. a lot of that going on with the new Knights Radiant. With I mean, I'm thinking of um, Renarin um, yeah. is a new thing. It, seem, it seems like there's a lot of, with Bentley. the coming of the Everstorm, which is Bentley, also a yeah. new thing, there's like a, this is very different than all the previous desolations. Yep. I would that's agree. just one other way that it's like that. It is. It is definitely a new age for Roshar. Yeah. And it obviously what they were doing before didn't work. So they do need to try something new to <laughs> I, eventually I defeat Odium. Yeah, they do. Well, maybe don't enslave all the singers. That'd probably be a good start. Yes. Crazy. And on that note, moving on to the next question from SV15249. Good job. <laughs> People. They're you don't need that many numbers. Venley is going to Welcome be a main to character. Sharkcast criticizes your Reddit username. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 love you guys. Hey, we started with mine, so that I mean Jay that's true. Cool. We and we do make fun of your name a lot. That's what we do. True. Anyway, uh, Venley is going to be a main character in Stormlight Four? Question mark. With big focus, like previous flashback characters had. I wanted to read more of Dalinar, considering how Oldbringer ended with massive cling hanger, sorta, for him. Dalinar will get more in five than four. Esh and I will have the flashbacks in four, though Venley will be featured in them. Good confirmation. That's what we all expected, right? Yep. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And we still know that Gavilar is going to be the prologue character we know that zeth is a five a five and we know that zeth is going to be the flashback character of yep. five so we just we don't uh, know yeah we don't know the prologue character of four it may or may not be navani yeah right. and we don't know the interlude character yes no. with a short story yeah no i mean those, those have been really important with no no they... ash and i venley so yeah sure they have been but they Okay, no, I agree. They have been. 
<laughs> I was going to say that they always kind of, I feel like Brendan decides on them late in the process. Yeah. But the, the recurring character is... Yeah, sorry, is I, that's what I was referring to. The, much more important. The Like the novella that was split among the interludes, that character. Yes, the interlude yep. through line. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, yep. It'll be interesting with book five with interludes, though. Like, because usually that short story character in the interludes matters more in the next book. What do you do for book five when there's going to be a big time jump? You know? Uh, you take a herald. <laughs> sure. All right. Cool. I like that. I called it. So this next question is from Dammy Jerry. Does Dalinar know about Aiden Nauseam? Stormfather dropped the term during one of their talks. So did he tell Dalinar the whole story of Shattering and Shards? Also, does he understand what exactly he did when he summoned the perpendicularity or not? Does he understand what's going on with him now that he's connected with Honor's remnant? Does he even know what shard means? I guess the question is, how Cosme or where is Dalinar is? Brennan, as of Oathringer, Dalinar isn't specifically aware of the larger Cosmere story, though he would have numerous aha moments if it were explained to him, as pieces of what he does know would fall into place. The Stormfather isn't particularly interested in the larger story, however, and that's one reason. Yasna is a different story. Hello, my baby. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> she, she, I don't th- think she feels similarly. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I care. All right. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's that's not how infatuation works, my friend. Well, that part true, but the way you said that, mm, <laughs> um, first of all, love the line. The Stormfather isn't particularly interested in the larger story. Yeah, Hilarious. So, so the takeaway is the Stormfather and Dalinar are two friends, and the Stormfather has read some Cosmere, but only likes Stormlight, <laughs> and only gives Stormlight <laughs> to Dalinar. <laughs> and so Dalinar would like to know more of the whole Cosmere story, but his friend, who's a jerk, doesn't think that any of the rest is worth it, and so he only gives him Stormlight. Don't be that friend. Be Yasna <laughs> instead. Be Yasna. I mean, Yasna has a, many attributes that we could aspire to be. She's not really. I mean, we should all want to be like Yasna. In many ways, some some ways less so. But. Yes, it's not really overflowing with everything she knows either, though. Yeah. Look, we don't know. She she knows lots of things that she's probably not telling us. Yasna's book 10. Book 10. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. But I also feel like she usually has a reason for not sharing information. Probably. True. I'm just book 10. That's going to be crazy. All right. Larassia Mistborn asks, Dalnar's parents were mentioned only briefly in the books. Did his mother die when he was a kid? Brandon, yes. Okay. Okay. Unfortunate, but okay. Yeah. Another dead mother in the cosmic. Another oh, dead mother. <laughs> Look at at least somebody, she's somebody unmade, uh, not not unmade, uh, unnamed, and also dead because there's lo- way too many co- uh copper mine articles that is like this person's mom. What do we know Look, about somebody, them? A little bit, somebody, but they're unnamed. Somebody and needs to ask whether Delner's dad killed his mom. Oh, gosh. What if Dalinar summoned a shard blade and killed his mom? Oh, <laughs> and then repressed the memory. Oh, no. That, that's, that, that would be the book five arc for Dalinar. <laughs> missing memories within missing memories. <laughs> And then Shalon helps <laughs> Dalinar. Whoa. Full circle. <laughs> oh, these dear. are all terrible ideas. Don't do any of these. Take Not us the away from the stressful no. topic, Jay of Wu. Next question is by J.K. Austin. <laughs> he says, uh, Wax felt a warmth, a fire, as if hidden inside the carriage, uh, as if hidden inside the carriage were heating to incredible temperatures. The voice vanished. The temperature returned to normal. Wax leaned back, sweating, feeling drained. Um, he says that that made him think about our favorite bondsmith who experiences something familiar. Is that um, is it a coincidence? I don't mean space says it specifically, but perhaps this is happens when shard any shard tries to communicate with people. In the case of Dalinar, it could be cultivation or 
another big splinter of honor. And Brandon said, the parallelism is intentional, but that's all I will say for now. The, the warmth is always a very interesting thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sentence. The warmth is always very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I am... I am... Look, it's winter in Chicago right now. I am keenly interested in warmth right now. Oh, I was no, taking that a completely different direction. Just in case um, anyone is lost. Well, sorry. Yes, um, yeah, this that, is referring that's what to, I was trying to do. This is referring to Dalinar's vision. In, well, I guess it's the beginning of Oathbringer. End he, of Words he, of Radiance. He has the vision at the end of Words of Radiance in his like childhood home. And it yeah. feels like a warmth. And then um, he kind of describes that again in early Oathbringer. Well, not only early Oathbringer, but it kind of feels like that in that weird Nohadon vision that yeah. Dalinar gets. Yeah, although there was no warmth there. It's just that the vision felt different. And oh, the Stormfather, you're right, you're right, you're right. it didn't come from the Stormfather. Yeah. Right. So there's and then weirdness. A slightly different example there was when Odium showed himself to Dalinar, it felt like being burned. Which is I don't a think that's more extreme same, version. I don't think I, like that's related to it's as related to the warmth visions as wax's thing is but they're not directly the same thing i don't i don't think i would make that connection um Dalinar was being I, burned alive by taking like the essence of odium like yeah yes Sim similarly to how kelsier perceived ruin and perceived preservation in their yeah. full depth or yeah, yeah, as yeah, full yeah, as right, he can right, perceive right Right. Yeah, I guess. And that is probably as much as we can say about this one. Next one comes from Beer in an Esky, which I will forever pronounce Beer in the Sky. <laughs> in the electronic sky, the E sky. In, in, in the E sky. <laughs> um, they, the they have. E they have <laughs> as, as Eric is dying there. Yeah, yeah, continue. Um, I'll meet myself. They had they had a list of questions and they're all short, so we'll we'll do all of them at once. Question number one says, Is Ashen still operating on a sickness based magic as indicated in the readings you've done previously, or are you not ready to canonize that? Uh, and this is referring to Brandon's reading of the Silence Divine, yep. which he's done he's done like a chapter or a prologue or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Brandon's answer is Ashen still has that magic, though I've done a lot i've gone a lot of directions on how i want the culture to feel so i wouldn't consider that canon yet question number two assuming it is was the use of investiture on ashen always sickness based no says <laughs> yeah. brandon which makes is really sense. really interesting yes i mean makes sense but really interesting and finally if someone who is sick on ashen leaves while still unwell would they still have powers? How about any people they infect on a new world? To which Brandon says, the powers come directly via microorganisms similar to other symbiotic relationships in the Cosmere. So that's just like uh, six of the dusk. Yep. Six yeah. of the dusk. Um, the hell bonds are also symbiotic. Yeah, any yeah, any but... spread bond is also symbiotic. Right, but like in this situation, via the microorganisms, yeah. that's six of the dusk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that investiture use on Ashen. Always sickness face. No, like no. Yeah, let's. Obviously, they had the surges. The surges. Well, yeah. Question mark. But on that note, like you, like the powers you get from the sickness could have been the surge or some form of the surge. Like they could have been based on that. Yeah, it just feels like. Uh, I guess the way I'm interpreting this to mean is that uh, after the uh, the expulsion from the Tracolin Halls, you know, when people left the Exodus, Ashen, the Exodus, that investiture use has just changed, and all that remains is the sickness-based magic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I take it that way as well. But until okay. this word of Brandon, we didn't know. Yeah, yeah, it, right. It could have been the other way as well. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. Which is really interesting. Very cool. It's also interesting because sicknesses aren't as prevalent on Roshar due to the ambient investiture. It's a nice ah, interplay sure. there. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Every time somebody brings up Ashen and the Silence Divine, I'm reminded of one of the Ketex in The Way of Kings. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the overarching Ketek, right? Above, above Silence. Yeah, I, I don't remember the, the wording of the Ketek, but I asked Brandon about it because it never made sense to me. Like, the one in the, in the second book, in Words of Radiance, very clearly talks about the clashing of the High Storm and the Everstorm. Right. But the first one never made sense to me. And Brandon said it referred to something happening above a silent land, I think. Uh, okay, so you don't you don't you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Yeah, so I'm going to read out the Katak. Above silence, the illuminating storms, dying storms, illuminate the silence above. Oh yeah, it was it was that phrase, the silence above the hmm. See I I took that to mean I took that to referring to honor being dead. Like God is dead, so there's silence, so he's like a heaven above. Okay, so I pulled up my uh, my wab from the Words of Radiance signing, mm -hmm. uh, and I say the Ketek in the first book. Here's the Ketek. It seems like it refers to Honor's death. Mm -hmm, says Brandon. What does above the silence refer to? Above a silent land, and and then Brandon just doesn't say anything else, except to confirm that the second one is about the two storms. My brain's yeah. too stupid to interpret poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like this is going to be one of the things that in Storm like Ted was going to be like, oh, the first Katek. This is totally <laughs> oh makes God. sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yep. I, I am unfortunately a hero of ages. Yeah, yes. right. Exactly. Exactly. There's going to be stuff like that that's going to blow our mind. We're in book three and we're like, whoa, look at that foreshadowing for book three. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, I, I guess this could refer to, hey, stuff is happening in a place where honor is is dead. Yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah. So anyway, this next word of Brandon is also by Beer in an Esky. Beer in the sky. Electronic sky. Yes. Did Hoyd meet Frost before, or after, or sometime in the same time range that he met the sixteen? Brandon, before, but on a Cosmere scale, it was very close to when he met the others. So they were in the same high school and the other vessels they met in college. Sounds right. <laughs> what? Yeah. Moving on. Moving, Moving on. on. Page Runner asks, do you have a star working title for Stormlight 4? Uh, and Brandon says that uh, he's had several working titles over the years, but the one that stuck around a while was The Song of Changes. I'm unlikely to keep this as it's never meant to be a final title. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the flashbacks are Ash and I. I like the, the song changes for a title. Granted, I also liked the Book of Endless Pages as a title. It's great. I, I think Song of Changes is a reasonably good title. Yep. Yep. Speaking uh, of, but... I totally want the Book of Endless Pages to become relevant again. Right. Come on, that's such an interesting concept. Do more with that, Brandon. Funny story about this question. I had asked pretty much this exact same question on Twitter like two days ago. And the answer came out with this. And I'm like, Brandon answered my question, but I don't have a notification in my Reddit inbox. And it threw me out in for a loop for like half an hour until I realized that it's just a different person asking the same question. Great oh, minds right. take a look. I, I always liked Song of Secrets as a title a little better. Like, Changes is just a little generic. But, like, mm -hmm. I like having the, a song in the title for a big singer book. So I, yeah, really, yeah. I really like that part. Yeah. Changes? Yeah. Eh, it's just... Changes is just I, kind of a generic word. I would not be surprised if, if song stays in the title somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, because it... it Almost has to, because we know some of the books in the archive aren't going to be traditional books. Ooh, well, good but point. Right, yeah, yeah. here's the thing, though, right? It could be, instead of a song, it could be like, book four could be The Rhythm of Change. Sure. I it wouldn't be. say, because the rhythm is just a rhythm. It's well, not, uh, but there, there you can still write a book of title of that. that. Does mention 
uh, that rhythm, like song or rhythm, that'll probably be in there. So I would be less satisfied with rhythm because it. Well, you have not. a history of being dissatisfied with <laughs> Brandon's naming choices. So yes, but I feel like so it's gonna be rhythm. It okay, being a song it. like that is a not literary, but it, it's a storytelling device. A rhythm is just a beat. Sure. I kind of like the idea that uh, we know that Vinley was recording songs like right. They they hadn't like written them down before. And then in yeah. Words of Radiance and Eshenai's interludes, we see that Vinley had been like recording their songs as part of her like research to figure out Ooh, how to summon storm forms. So I kind of like this idea that we've got this Eshenai Vinley book and it's going to be I mean, she's song. the one you know had been writing things down. A Either that song. she writes a new song or yeah. it's some like old one that she like digs up. Sure. And uh, puts down. Anyways. Yeah. I don't think it will be one that she writes just because Oathbringer was a book written by the main character. That's true. But a new song is also like a big deal for singers. So like, yeah, it, it could be a similar thing, but feel different enough and momentous enough for the singers that it won't feel that way. Yeah. As long as the um, part one epigraphs are not all part of the foreword of the book and then we don't find out till the very end <laughs> i mean that would be very obvious what singer who's recording things is making a new song whoa crazy i never would have nice mom spoiler <clears throat> yeah let's move on next question is by mithril nova does the positioning of a hemologic spike matter on the donor the recipient or both brandon says recipient i uh it's not true, is it? Uh, it's unclear because he's referred to the heart as a universal theft point, which is implies that you can steal things from other places on the body, but you're restricted in what you'll get. Wait, so is this saying? I always thought that like for many years that I thought you needed to stab in a specific place and input the spike in a specific place. Like you charge it, you get a specific charge and then you have to p implant it in the very specific location. Yeah. I mean, right. it has to be very specific. Right. But not necessarily the same. Like, but if the donor, if you're always spiking it through the heart, what is actually charged in the hemologic spike? What quality it, it, are you by getting? intent? Like well, what are you intent? trying oh, to do? Ah, <laughs> that is yep. just like ah yes, this was I I needed to just know that I needed to get the uh, alimantic bronze rather than the latent preservation. God, that's infuriating. I well, mean, it's like if you're using pewter on a mistborn, like which ability or no, you wouldn't be using pewter on a mistborn because that's fairy command. Prove me. You're using trying to spike out physical elementic powers or yeah, yeah, whatever they're called. We need a hemology table. Yeah, Whoa. we do need a hemology table. Well, by the time this podcast airs, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll actually have it because it's in the well, Hero of yeah. Ages leather round. Yes, and we have um, already talked about it, likely, but maybe probably. <laughs> so. What I'm about to say might be completely irrelevant. That's true. But like it, it is by intent. It's I just and don't. Each spike can steal multiple things. But tying <sighs> tying this to intent also makes him allergic feel a little bit more like a magic system than the the very mechanical process that it actually is. I don't like this. For I, the I record, don't like it either. I really don't like this. I hate this idea. Um, it should. Him God. Him allergy always feels weird to me. Like, I don't like this. I, if you're spiking someone in a specific location, you should just get one thing, and not just like it could be forty different things stabbing this. And you, you, yeah, you just you just have to like think about it rightly to to get the right quality that you want. Like, God, but that's like irritating. you have to do that anyways to be able to perform hemology. That you just feels just weird to me. That, and like, create a spike. Like, that just invent. always feels weird to me. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, so you know how they make Inquisitors? They yeah. essentially strap two people together on a table. Yeah. And they drive the spikes. So so they are essentially overlaid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then they drive the spikes directly through. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're not all going through the heart then and the donor. So right? so yes, 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 they're not they're not all going through the heart. Yes, I'm I'm going with you on this one. But maybe maybe the only like the primary reason they do that is just to avoid the hemorrhagic decay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Cuz otherwise they would need to like strap the person so that the heart of the of the donor is on top of the left forearm of the recipient and then move the donor on the other side and then go again through the heart or maybe you can only steal one thing from the heart at a time or not at a time but like period i mean i think they're using multiple people when they're creating it oh well, yeah that yeah, is yeah, true. That, that's yeah, right yeah, that's right yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, yeah. they're using a lot more people right yeah, yeah they have to be using a lot more people that's right yeah yeah, yeah. They, they are they are i suppose so. let's come back to this one after we yeah, should probably go table. back to this one because this this will be completely dumb if we've already done a podcast on the hemology table. Yeah. Not that yeah. that this will deal with the donor part. Well, you don't it know. might. No, it might. But if we are completely wrong, we'll just cut it out. Or we can just have the listeners, watchers talk, post in the comments about how wrong we are. Or always. do that, but actually don't. So, regardless of whether there was a question before about hemorrhagic... Well, no, no, no. That question will always be there. Oh. It's just some part of it will be... <laughs> anyway, next question time. Uh, it comes from Squishy Mouth. <laughs> hey, easy to pronounce. I like it. <laughs> and, uh, and the question is, God Metal Alloys in Era 1 felt a bit like an unfulfilled promise... Can you tell us about the attributes stored in a metal mind made out of any ATM slash Lerasium alloy? No, not yet, says Brandon. This is something I tend to get into in Era 3, and I'm saving for it. Which, that's interesting. I don't think that we knew that before. No, I don't think we know that before. That is a brand new piece of information about God Metals. Mm -hmm. And uh, Era 3. Especially, yeah, man. Era 2 is just going to be the, is the short book icing to the Era 3 Big Mistborn book cakes. Like, ah, oh, mmm, mmm, give me, give me those long 200,000 word Mistborn books again, the big mm. ones. Oh. Them, them seven hundles. <laughs> not, not quite that long. But, uh. Also oh, interesting. There were about 700 pages. Because, like, how much lost metal will we get in the lost metal, for example? Which yeah. Atium's referred to as lost metal. So it's probably about Atium, right? Maybe. Probably. It, it, Maybe. There's literally a pedestal where it says Atium, comma, the lost metal. Yes, I'm aware of that. And I'm also aware that Brandon is a trickster god. Well, that's true. So it's. Brandon has made comments in the past that like, oh, you can't get Atium or Larasium anymore because Ati and Laras are dead, which wow. I've always really hated. Well, because... yeah, but he's also he's also said that Atium is going to come back in like 300 yeah. years, which well, that's where we are. I thought it was more just a function of Harmony, not that they're dead, but like Harmony would you need know... to release that. Brennan has said that, like, oh, you can't have Atium anymore because Ati is dead. That is literally a word of Brennan that he has said I, that I think is terrible and stupid. Because <laughs> uh, if Atium is supposed to be the physical, solid embodiment of Ruin, it shouldn't matter who the vessel is. I, I don't. I, I think well, you're maybe taking that a little too literally. <laughs> Brandon makes mistakes sometimes. Like Crazy. Like, we'll find out. It may be it may be interesting though to find out whether two vessels holding the same shard would produce god metals that are in any way different. Well, I mean, we see that at metal is pretty different. No, I, he means okay. like uh, if one person picks up ruin, they make if AD picks up ruin, he makes ATM. If then someone else picks up ruin, they make something slightly different than ATM, even though it's the same shard. I think that's what you're saying. So from the Shadows of Self release party questioner. Before preservation locked up Ruin or whatever, or if Ruin had won, would Adium still exist? Brennan, there are timelines where there would be no Adium. Questioner, so if Harmony exists, does Atium exist? Brennan, 
Atium does not exist because there is no Ati. There is, well, there is Atium left over from before, but questioner, so if it was only part of Ati's body and not part of Harmony's body. Brennan, there is no Atium. There is no preservation any longer. There is no Ati. Questioner, so does Harmony, Harmonium exist? Brennan, there is no law, there is, and there's no Ati. There's no ruin. Questioner, does Harmony, Harmonium exist then? Good question. Which that seems to heavily imply There's that... There's other words of Brandon that it's just about a function of harmony, though, so... Yeah. I'm just like, I hate that word, Brandon, so much. Again, release parties are really long. So, yes. like... Eh. Him saying Atti versus Ruin, like, I'm not gonna get, like, super nitpicky with that. Personally. Oh, hey, this is nice for you, Ian. Yes, I get to read a word of Brennan by a smart, intelligent person. Eh, Where are you writing? A no, really no, pedantic you... person. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> being pedantic does not being preclude being smart and interesting just or whatever I, else I say. Well, I don't, I don't, well, it might preclude interesting to many people. <laughs> <laughs> and you those people are what interests. I like to call wrong. Oh, I see. Okay. So the preface to this question to make it vaguely related to Skyward. Spencer is a bloodthirsty individual, so I was going to ask a bloodthirsty Boo. question. Boo. Hemorrhagic spikes lose power unless they are in a person's body or immersed in blood. Does that body need to be living or would a corpse suffice? If so, at what point in the decomposition process would the spikes cease to be protected? When they are no longer encased in flesh? Before? After? Brennan, I haven't put a spe specific number or date on it, but I'd say as long as the blood itself would be viable if moved to a living body, it would work. Okay. Which I don't think it would be viable for very long, but I don't know for sure. I don't know. That's weird. If you're a doctor, comment below. Yes. If you know about blood. If you are well-versed in hemolurgy. Please tell us about uh, donors versus recipients. <laughs> oh, man. This next one from Colton X9. Why do the gems in Yasna's Soulcaster break when she is using her own ability in the first book? Brandon, Yasna is very good at fooling people. Oh, my God. This question. <sighs> We had this question on Shardcast when we were talking about Favriels and Soulcasters. Yeah. And we were like, but wait, but why would the gems break if the Soulcaster was fake? Is it is it stress? It's is just it a lie, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm a little confused, actually, because I've been looking at uh, some of this, some different uses of Stormlight lately. Uh -huh. And the scene it breaks is when she is... Um, so casting the thieves in the back alley. Thieves. Yep. Yep. So who's sh she's trying to fool Shalon? Maybe she just designed yep. the gems to just break. That it was yeah. just kind At of certain like, points. Yeah. Because... Rather than it actually be a function of her drawing stormlight, rather. Yeah. Or or she could be so casting breaks into them. I mean, it would um... be necessary to fool Shalon at that stage, right? Shalon breaks some gems as well, though. Now that I think about it. When she soul casts the boat in uh, the beginning of Words of Radiance, um, uh -oh. yeah, she she hears the sound of of gems cracking. So I, which, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's Great. I've never understood why people are so confused by this. It's just like, yeah, gems break when you soul cast. Like, yeah, but why didn't Brandon just say that then? Because Brandon likes forgot. Okay, so you say, with people, you say like breaks gems when you uh, breaks gems. Gems break when you soul cast. Is this a property of soul casting or is it a property of surge binding? Ian. I, I would say more property of sur um, surge binding. Okay. I don't think we've seen any other order of radiance break gems, including Kaladin, who uses a ton of stormlight. But uh, is he using the same gems over and over and over and over again? I don't think so. No, I don't either. Hmm. 
But I also don't know that he drains it as quickly. Like, I think that soul casting is pretty unique in that it drains a lot of Stormlight in a very short period of time. I don't know that Kaladin ever uses that much from a gym at once. Right? Yeah, that's also a good point. He, from from a gym? Oh, no, he, he drains the gyms first. Right. I don't know. I don't know either. It's interesting. I, I'm just a little skeptical about. I'm this wondering one. if he. Yeah, you're, yeah, no, but you're right. You're right. Like we're going to we're going to need to put together an essay that says, hey, Brandon, here are the 17 times people use Stormlight from gems directly. And these two times it breaks the gems. What's up? What's up? Next question is uh, by Devorian. Devorian. Uh, in the Midnight Essence vision Dalinar has in the Way of Kings, the female Radiant was wondering who released it. Shouldn't the Radiants know, uh, have known then that it was Risha Fear that was the general source of Midnight Essence? And Brandon said, yes, but Midnight Essence can be, extract- can be extracted and used independently. Gross. Which is creepy. interesting. That is cool. So are we thinking then that Risha Fear was trapped in a, in a perfect gem, let's say? And somebody was like draining just a little bit of her investiture. Well, I mean, or or were midnight essences trapped separately yeah. in like small gems? Yeah, that's what I think. That like you extract that. It, I think once Rachefer was uh, imprisoned, then uh, you can't continue to extract that. I I don't think she was imprisoned yet. No, I don't think so point. either. It's too early. Well, why would people trap? individual midnight essences though instead of just killing them uh i think that's more just a function of the enemy wanting to release that in many places whereas the unmade is only in one location and you yeah. would want to release it in 50 cities rather than just one yeah and, and so like at this point reshafir isn't out and about in the world because it's not a desolation and she doesn't want to attract notice but there might be certain nefarious individuals that like, oh, let's get some Midnight Essence from Russia Fear and throw it at this random town. I mean, it's still just a, during a desolation, it would be a tactical advantage to want to use that unmade to its fullest if you can just release Midnight Essence somewhere mm-hmm. else. So I think that makes sense. Can um, you kill Midnight Essence? Yes. Yeah. 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 They yeah, they they do buff up in in like Dalinar kills one yeah. in in division. Kill in quotation marks because like are they even alive in the first place? Well, right, like right, right. It, that's complicated. But like yes, you can destroy Midnight. There you go. There you yep. go. They are constructs. They can be deconstructed. Yeah. Yes. Um. And and they seem to be like bags of smoke, sentient bags of smoke. Yeah. But like it's it, it's still a tactical advantage. I can see why someone would want to. It's like ah, Risha fears around, uh, or like a, some fused or something. Let's let's like get a lot of this, and you know, then I can release it when I want. Sure, I can see that. And on that note, we're gonna move on to the next unmade question oh, from. Yeah. Uh, okay, you are in Discord, Dvorain or Dvorain or whatever. Tell me how to say your name. Yeah, that'd be great. The question is. To see the future originates with the unmade. Void binding is a dark and evil thing, and the soul of it was to try to divine the future. Oh, so they, they like introduce or something. Is it therefore safe to say that void binding by extension also originates with the unmade? Not always, says Brandon, but usually. Which is one of my favorite words of Brandon that have come out recently, by yeah. the way. Void binding usually comes from the unmade. It makes sense because we see, would we consider Amaram using the searches as void binding? That's from Yelignar. I, I think true. at this point we have to. I guess yeah, this quote make, would make that pretty explicit. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sia not corrupting Gliss. Yep. Kind of giving void binding to Renarin. Yeah. I, I, I would argue that Renarin's visions are straight void binding. Sure. And and his his progression is straight surge binding, or even by Edomishram connecting to the Parsh, 
giving them forms of power. Well, I feel like, well, I feel like, uh, well, I would say that that's a little different, but we we the we don't know how extensive power. void binding is, you know. Yeah. Yep. So next one is from MS07 MS-07 B-3. Clearly a future Cosmere AI. Yep. Yes. <laughs> it's noted in Oathbringer that Tawn was the only herald who was not supposed to have been one, and he was not a king, general, scholar, or anyone special as it were. So what occupation did he hold before becoming a herald? Brennan, he was a soldier and bodyguard. Which makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Sounds right. Yep. Cool to know. New fact. Yeah. Um, what if he was possibly Ash's bodyguard? I've seen that yeah. proposed. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Could be. Aremus asks, and lastly, a cosmic point of contention. You've said before the Moon Scepter works as a Rosetta Stone. Is this literal, as in translating one aeon to its Maipon counterpart, or more metaphorical, i.e., allowing use of a Celis magic outside of its country. Brandon, the Moon Scepter does not unlock regional use of a Celis magic, but those who wanted it believed it was a vital step in figuring this out. It's more the first, but has implications for the second. Okay. Okay. So it's not just magic thing that does stuff. There's more to the process. It's yeah. it's more like a dictionary it's like a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah. Fair. Yeah, but it doesn't unlock it for nothing, you know? Yeah. It, it takes more work than just, okay, these two symbols mean the same thing. Yep. Right. It's, a, it's a key. It's a key. But there's more to it than that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next question is uh, Page Runner, and he, um, this is kind of a long question here, but he um, basically, he says, uh, Brandon, you've given us um, a few clues about unknown shards over the years. One that wants to hide and survive. One that's not on a planet, but not ambition. One that Hoyd would have taken. And one that would have been used for arithmetist. Um, and he kind of asks, are basically, are these, are any of these referring to the same one? Are they all four d different ones that you're referring to? Uh, Brandon says, I'll tell you this. Those aren't necessarily four different shards, but I do have a Rappo. Um, for which one Hoyd might have taken. So so nothing really new, except that they are not necessarily for a different shard. Yeah. I completely yeah. forgot, though, that uh, there was a shard that was going to be for the Rhythmatist that, uh, and that shard we have not seen yet. Yep. 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 Well, with Although the, the sequel to the Rhythmatist, right. yeah. the sequel to the Rhythmatist, Brandon says, might give us clues on to what that shard would have oh, been. that's right! Oh, that's another big reason why we should ask for the Rhythmatist <laughs> sequel. Oh, good point. Thanks. I You're mean, right. people ask for it as much as they ask for Stormlight, so... Well, uh, yeah. more. It's oh, his most requested book. One thing that is kind of interesting to me here, I'm just kind of nitpicking on some of the wording. Uh, Paige says, one that Hoyd would have taken. Um, and I don't know the exact wording of the original Wob that came from, but Brandon's response says, one Hoyd might have taken. I thought he was offered one and he just refused it. I, I think that's, yeah. that's oh that's one. what we're referring to is I, okay. I thought there was that one. Okay, I'm with you. And then I thought wasn't that endowment? We don't uh, know. I, oh, I think I... endowment is the one he would be most likely to take. Oh right, yep. yeah, but he was offered one and refused one. It wasn't that he was offered endowment. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Got Good. It. And we then move on to a question from Zuberzup S. In Words of Radiance, when the sailors were being killed, Yasna Shalan sees the flames representing the minds of the sailors vanishing in Shadesmar, but the sailors don't appear in the cognitive realm. In contrast, in Secret History, we see that all sapient entities do transition to the cognitive realm before going to the beyond. Is there something strange here, or am I just overthinking this? Brandon says, you're not overthinking this, but it's also not as strange as you might think. The one seeing the spirits on Skadriel... And, and that's Kelsier. Right. Was in a different state than Yasna or Shalan. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So cognitive shadows, or, or dead people really, cognitive entities, perceive the cognitive realm different from people in the physical who are able to look into the cognitive. Yeah. Or who are inside of it. Yeah. Or who are inside, yeah. Which is I wonder where... Red would fall. 
probably more on the cognitive shadow yeah thing i would imagine so what do they see to see well right we need a spren interlude i feel like we will get spren viewpoints right like, oh yeah i feel like I that definitely. must be a thing for sure i think that'd be great yeah it would be weird i know that's why I it'd be great think, right. <laughs> i think we have a word of brendan that we might get a sprint viewpoint later on yeah 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 i think i think that will be a thing i feel like we have to at some point yep it'd be cool so this <laughs> next one is from dash Lurcher dash at the end of oathbringer it seems that many huh i believe those are hyphens <laughs> okay dashes. hyphen Lurcher hyphen there you go at the end of they're, they're actually minus signs that... <laughs> okay, okay, the the of it seems that many <laughs> What's including up? myself felt that Seth's return in sudden alignment with the protagonist went over a little too easily is this from Windrunner are right. they accepting of him now why the sudden change of heart are they going to be trust issues in the future Brennan uh yeah <laughs> obviously crazy men who shift allegiances quickly after murdering the king and starting a war aren't exactly the sort you leave home to babysit your kids Oh, I did paste uh, this to Windrunner when this happened, and <laughs> and David was very pleased. He was very pleased that that would be explored further. And then he's like, "Okay, all right, that's fine." Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to check with my babysitter real quick. <laughs> I didn't know you had Seth's phone number. There are many things about me you don't know. I also didn't know you had kids. So <laughs> I also didn't know I had kids. <laughs> <laughs> I you hired know, Seth to babysit you, you my had children. A babysitter. <laughs> I found I found some kids and I, I found, found the slave. Guy. He seemed like he'd be a solid babysitter. He would follow uh, all my instructions really. I mean, yeah. there was a rock and I play Hearthstone and I I like rocks, so it worked. Seth was automatically drawn to that. Yeah, I like, no, I like that. Uh, that was good. That the was the good. resume was great. And minus sign lurcher minus sign also asks, Ghost Bloods is an interesting name to me. Is that a name that originated on Roshar or somewhere else? Does the group have to do with either ghosts or blood? Or is it more a metaphorical name? Brandon, the name of the Ghost Bloods has roots in specific Cosmere events and means something in world. Which is exciting. That is very exciting. I've recently been liking the theory that it's tied to Threnody in some way. Yeah, I like yep. that a lot. I've I've heard that as well, and I and I dig it. Yep. We don't know much about the Ghost Bloods. No. We know that there are world hoppers within them. Uh, we know that they have various degrees of Cosmere awareness. And and just parsing the name, like you you would expect that specific Cosmere event to be the death of something, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But ghosts in the Cosmere yeah. are cognitive shadows. Right. And there is a cognitive shadow on one of the worlds what? who refuses to go away. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Joshua, save us, save us, save us. It's not well, Kelsey, next we already know this. Uh, next question is by Calderis. Uh, does the Nipersil portion of the medallions uh, in Mistborn Era 2 function identically to how a soul bearer fairing uses Nicrosil? Brandon so. says, not exactly. The medallion is a little more restrictive for one thing. Which makes sense to me. So for those of our listeners who don't remember all 256 misting and fairing types, yeah. soul bearers... Um, there's only 32 misborn and uh, misting and fairy types. Whatever. Windborn types. Right, they're right here on my wall. Just just enhance <laughs> my my screen and you'll you'll see them. Uh, soul uh, bearers are uh like soul fairings who store investiture. And so the medallion is a little more restrictive. So essentially they do similar things, but if you are a fairing, you can do more things. Yeah. Sounds right. I guess another way to Another comparison I can make is if you are a windrunner, there are multiple ways you can you can utilize uh, gravitation and adhesion. Adhesion. But if you are a fab, if you are using a fabrio, 
that makes use of gravitation, there is a only one use Probably, of that search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the relationship here is very similar. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. I would agree. Yes. Though, getting back to our fab fields. Nope, nope, nope. I don't... Moving on. Moving on. Don't <laughs> care. Don't care. We, we've heard it before. But, like, okay. But I, I do think this makes sense because it is, like, we know there are things called exercise, excisers involved yes. in the construction of these medallions. So it, it makes sense that they should be more restricted. That is all of the the many, 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 many words of Brandon from that one. We're, we're only picking a exciting subset. You can go look at all of these on Arcanum at wob.coppermine.net. We do we have, have... How many? 300 and... There was 361. Yeah. Uh, of them. Yeah. But then there was this other event where uh, Ravi got to ask questions on the behalf of some people on discord and so we're gonna do that and then the next episode we're actually gonna get to the skyward release so let's crank these few out here ravi asked for me do the fuse still require a bond with his friend for maintaining a form slash full sapience or does the investiture that makes them cognitive shadows fulfill that requirement brennan they do not require a bond with his friend so yes the investiture handles all of that cool which i believe I added that to my list at, from a discussion on Shardcast, I think. Probably. I... Is this is this coming from a place where, well, singers without a sprint are kind of dumb, so they need investiture, mm -hmm. but the fuse don't have a sprint? Yeah. That's the, that's the direction you were following? Mm -hmm. Well, I was wondering, like, do they have a spread? Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Which they don't, so that's interesting to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they need some extra oomph to think. Yes. Lady Lamnus asks, you said that Tien was beginning to bond a cryptic before he died. Did he use surge binding before he died, even unconsciously? If yes, did we ever see it on screen? Brandon, he was far enough along to start having some of the, let's just say he was far enough along to sworn at least one oath. Truth. Sad. Well, no oath. Uh, first ideal. Oh, first sure. ideal is an oath. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. And all the rest are truths. Yeah. Sad. Everybody's a radiant. Yes. They're all connected in the spiritual realm. God. That, that were the Brandon. <laughs> it's going to haunt me for decades. Everything's connected in the spiritual realm. We're, guys, listeners, we're all connected in the spiritual realm together. We are we are all one. That's right. That's the the terrifying. Iriali have the truest religion of them all. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next question is Ecstesian. Uh Can you give away a divine breath to another human? If so, would they have the same powers as a returned, or would they just store it like an inanimate object with breath is stored when uh, is stored in uh, when not awakened? Does a human require a crack in their spirit web to receive a divine breath? So a divine breath. You're kind of going along the wrong direction in that line of reasoning. Divine breaths cannot be transferred. When they are used, they immediately become kinetic investiture and are activated. This manifests normally as healing the person, both body, mind, and soul, but you can't give it up. Transfer it in the same way you can regular breaths. So that's not surprising to me. Which is interesting. That's new, though. That it is new. cannot be transferred. Right. I mean, we, previously, we just never knew. Yeah. Uh, although I guess it kind of makes sense. It also it also makes the term divine breath kind of a misnomer because it's not really a breath. No. It's part no, of it. It's, it's, it's endowment Oof. super juice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically, I mean, we have, we have Kelsier who becomes a, a cognitive shadow, right? It, so it's kind of this investiture that's... Um, a part, he needs... Like, he needs a lot of investiture in himself to kind of sustain that and imprint himself strongly enough so that he doesn't just disappear. Yep. And so I, to me, that's endowment basically coming up and saying, here's a giant piece of me. You get to stick around longer. And so you can't, you can't just like give that away because it's who you are. Like it's what makes you, you. And, this week's and episode of Starcast is brought to you by Endowment Super Juice. <laughs> <laughs> see us, see us right outside of Nalthian Customs. Right. <laughs> Right. Which which we know to be canon. 
I love nothing crystals. Yeah, Moving too. on. Moving on to a question from Straw. Yep. What are the deepest ones? Which is a question we all share on this yeah. podcast because what are the deepest ones? <laughs> Which we talked ones? about like, on our co- on our weird stuff episode. Right. The quote is God beyond protect them in the f- if the fighting had drawn one of the deepest ones from shadows for silence in the forests of hell. You will find out if I ever write the next book, the next book set on Threnody, uh, which is the Threnody novel, uh, which in its current iteration is the story about people going back yep. to their homeland. Yep. yep. Yes. To fight the evil or something. Fight the evil or reclaim the homeland or whatever. Yeah. But Brandon later said uh, in words of Brandon in the tour that, uh, yeah, that, that that's apparently a big deal. The deepest one. Yep. So I'm going to I'm going to set my foot down and I'll say the deepest ones are like shades. They are cognitive shadows, but they've also been super juiced in one way or another. And they are really scary, really powerful world hopping cognitive shadows that are a danger to the entire Cosmere. Outside of Trinity Customs, there's uh, ambition <laughs> super juice. Come now and you will become deeper. Yeah, I, I do think that they are sapient. Yeah, because most shades are not right, which is unusual. Ooh, yeah, that's true. Sure, yeah. seemingly yeah. unusual for cognitive yeah. shadows. But... Yeah, that is. And true. I will say that the Irie are potentially concerned about one of them showing up in their little fortress next to Scadrial. Did yeah. they say that and... about the deepest one specifically? Oh, not no. Not they the just said one. no. Threnidite. Yeah, no, like they. they uh, yeah, they said Threnidite. That's. They they refer to the sh- like. Cognitive shadows from Trinity or something, right? I guess that's mm-hmm. true. I assumed it was a shade. Yeah, me too. Were... Yep. That's very cool. Yep. That's very cool. I like that. So shades, they're gonna be a big deal. I'm calling it 2018. Deepest ones, big deal. Some some misborn era four plottery. Okay, so technically this is not from the Skype Q and A. Oh no, you're that right. was the last one of the Skype Q and A. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. This was from uh, the. It was oh, the Great Worldcon? American Read, that one. Oh, Great American oh. Reads. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was... Hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, so this questioner asks, other other shards other than Odium cult- Cultivation can take physical form, right? Brennan, yes. Are there any shards that can't? Brennan, no. Could Ruin have taken physical form in the Well of Ascension? Brennan, so yes. What it, what it really counts to be physical for someone like a shard is subject to debate but he could have done some of the things that others have done. There were certain restrictions on both ruin and preservation because of the deal they had set up that would not have made doing that very useful, but there is possibility he could have. Mm. Which is interesting. That is very interesting. I am always very interested about shards manifesting because I feel like if you have divine power and a ridiculous amount of investiture, possessing some animal to talk for you is really, like, pretty low-hanging fruit for gods. I don't know. Or, like, like why do you have to go through the hemallergic crap to talk to someone? I don't know. It feels like that should be easy, right? But it's not. It, it's just straight up not. For, or uh, just Mr. create vibrations in the air right exactly like I, that doesn't take that much energy to do right yeah tell me tell me if there's something that brandon said about this but it makes me wonder if the the whole um the fact that they have these limitations on how they can communicate is related to the deal they made with each other that he refers to here I guess. and not just not just like a part of their inherent nature like i always assumed like a oh, ruin can like only like uh he could talk to people with metal in them and that's just, it. but he can't so, do these other things. Is that not like his nature? Maybe that's just part of the deal I they made. Has think restricted it is to his that. nature. It, I, yeah, because Brennan has and, said that Harmony yeah. can do both because he has both. Right, right. Uh, Brandon has also talked about this in, I don't know about events, but in the annotations at least. Um, and also in, in, in the book itself, right? Um, preservation is, preservation can't, insert stuff into people's souls and and stuff also means sound voice because it is it is so it is when vin ascends and she tries to talk to people and ruins like haha no you can't do that 
your power tries to you, you can't insert yourselves in people's souls because your power tries to shore up those cracks only i can talk to people because my power is is inherently divisive hmm. there's also a phallic metaphor that brendan makes in the annotations about the ruins power and spikes but yeah but like manifesting physically is just a very interesting thing mm -hmm. and what restrictions shards have how did the deal prevent them what hmm. could have been in the in the tos <laughs> there there is some other stuff later not specifically about the deal on how brandon is just like kind of cagey about some era one stuff it's like what but 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 why i think we're not done with era one secret history part two the secreter history <laughs> secret, secret history, history. Secret secreter. Secret geology. So I'm I'm very interested to know about this because I have never understood why it's so hard for shards to manifest sometimes. It doesn't make sense to me. No. I mean Ruin and Preservation, okay, if their deal had a had a, a, a bullet point in the TOS, fine. Endowment doesn't seem to have much interest in manifesting. Well Odium has trouble manifesting because he is bound and and maybe invested in raise and so manifesting on... and worried about a counterattack from cultivation sure yeah uh honor has trouble manifesting because he did <laughs> cultivation had no issues cultivation was right there well that was also again a, a center of her power yeah in the valley yeah so and, and so that could be what i'm getting at is it is not necessarily the shards have a hard time manifest like the only time we see shards have a difficulty is in schedule mm -hmm. and in in the absence of an otherwise pretty good explanation such as Odin. yeah and when lara's preservation does manifest in here of ages there's not much. it opens him up to attack from ruin i guess that's true yeah I guess that's true yeah true and so for our last one for today this questioner is asking about Zeth Sword, and specifically, Nightblood. And Brandon says, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about Nightblood eventually. And the questioner asks, does that sword have a character arc? Brandon, the sword is important and relevant to multiple series. And Brandon also says uh, about Nightblood, he's learned some things in the intervening years. He learns real, real slowly. Which, At least he's learning. Which is good to know. Yeah. It's good that he's learning. That's good. Yeah, he's not he's not completely stuck in in his inception stage. Yep. Yep. Maybe Shashar is actually dead to, to him now. Unlikely. Great. So the that, that was pretty good. There, there was some good interesting stuff. Yeah. But the real spicy stuff happens in the main Skyward QA. Alright, Skyward Birds of Brandon, which Guys, we, we I, I hope we can get it in three episodes. <laughs> we are we are on page twelve of four. Well, 40. also everything's not transcribed yet. So yes, there's some, yeah. there's some new uh, Houston and Atlanta stuff yeah. that's not in this document. So you you might get a lot of them, but we're we're gonna we're we're being choosy. It's not like, you know, the Idaho Falls words of Brandon where it's like, ah, you know, that's kind of interesting. That's cool. No, we're, we're trying to pick, like, really cool things. And so if yeah. you ask something and it wasn't included here, that doesn't mean your question wasn't great. It's just we're trying to keep it educational for Cosmere stuff or really exciting Cosmere stuff, basically. Yeah. Although it could have been just not a great question. You might be bad at questions. <laughs> also true. Also true, potentially. But... Uh, you said that and not me, so. <laughs> Great. So it is time for Who's That Cosmere Character? All right, guys. You know the game. You send five clues to who's that Cosmere Character at gmail.com. Also with an answer. That'd be great. Uh, and we read them off. Uh, and 
after each clue, each of our contestants gets a guess. And uh, the first one who guesses gets all the glory, which, statistically speaking, is Ian. So, great. This first one is from Mason Wheeler. Okay. Yeah. Aldi. Long time member of the fandom. Indeed. Clue number one. This character is an allomancer. Ham. No. Clubs. No. Uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is. I am, I am, I mean, I was trying to remember the name of, of Kelsier's teacher, but I can't. So whoever remembers that is going to win this. Um, do, you guys, do you guys know Kelsier's teacher's name? I do. I do. do, do you want to well, I am, I am 100% blanking out on, on all misborn things. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of Alamancers. You should be able to think of at least one. That's true. Well, but I'm, I'm thinking of specific ones that I can't remember the names. Okay. Um, Alrian. No. Clue two. This character helped Kelsier. Gamel. Demu. No. No. <gasps> Deceived you. Gamel was a good guess, though. I like I like Gamel. Yeah. Debated helped Kelsier. Hmm. I mean, spook. No. Clue three. This character was not a member of Kelsier's crew. Oh, I could have used that information earlier. <laughs> I know. That's why it's clue three. Now, by this, do we think his crew in the final empire or his crew before or mayor? No. I was thinking Mare. Was Mare an Alamancer? Tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah right. right, of course. There was someone else with them when they broke into the Critic Shaw, and I think he was an Alamancer, but I have no idea what his name is. Mayor? That is literally what Jaku just said. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were talking about the mayor in book three. <laughs> no. Yeah. Also, that person yeah. has a name. And it's not mayor. <laughs> well, no, but he is he was a mayor. Yeah, no, yes, I, but we would have accepted that as no. a guess. No. No, it is oh. not mayor for the second time again. <laughs> <laughs> If we if we if we ask long enough, oh, menace. Oh. No, it's not. It's Gummel. No, Kelsier. No, Spook. Ham. To be fair, would Kelsier be considered a part of Kelsier's crew? <laughs> yes. Kelsier yeah. has helped himself. <laughs> it's not Kelsier, though. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hoyd? It is Hoyd! Oh, nice. It is Hoyd. Clue number four is this character makes a somewhat dubious claim of land ownership. Uh, and yeah. clue five, this character is a friend of Wayne's. Dang it. Good on you. How does uh, he help Kelsier? Uh, gives information as an informant. Yeah. Oh. In first book. Okay. I was thinking secret history. I know, I know, I know. He, Hoyd wasn't quite helpful in that in that specific situation. <laughs> he provided a much needed beating. Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, was necessary for yes, Kelsier's self esteem. All right, this next one is from Colton X Nine, who we read a word of random from. Uh, we did earlier. Clue number one, this character is a twin. Wickham. No. Yushu. No. <laughs> are they twins? Yes. I don't remember. Oh, they are? Okay. Fraternal. Yeah, didn't we talk? Yeah, we talked. Oh, about yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am just being stupid today. It's so hard for me to not make stupid guesses, even though I know the answer. I just want to troll you guys with stupid answers. But I should really I, just shut up. 
feel like there's not that many twins in the Cosmere. Yes, but I also literally can't think of any. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we got Wickham, we got Yushu. And, and we got did. his twin. Yes. 100% <laughs> accomplishment weight. Is this is this going to be some some twin sisters that somebody made a claim to have slept with? What? No. Oh, yes. That okay. sounds like a Wayne thing to do. Clue two! This character is young. K-Eyes. No. Uh, well, I'm going to guess the Orn, but they're not twins. <laughs> no, it is not the Orn. I thought okay, we good. I thought we figured they are. No, they're called twins, but they're not actually twins. Do we know that? This was deb- I think we debated over this and we disagreed. I Probably. Think, I think we did. When did that happen? This is on Discord. It's on oh, Discord. Yeah. Probably probably one of those keeper chat things that it's like we get into yeah. heated arguments about nothing important. Yep. Um, yeah. I only hang out with the art channels. Yeah. Pass again. <laughs> <laughs> Clue three, Raylan, this character's Raylan's... job. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say the Raylan's non canon evil twin brother. No. It is it is not uh I don't even think they were twins. No, they were not. He's not the Mad <laughs> Prince. Brother. The Mad Prince, yeah. Eton. 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 No. Um, <laughs> Clue three, this character's job would be to obtain food. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Evgeny's face just get progressively more and more confused is wonderful. And now you can follow along, dear listener. I know. Your watcher. I'm just gonna lean back. <laughs> Thrilling. Um, yeah, I, this is the quality I'm trying to think if you want. The um, the only thing I can th- is there a twin in Hearthstone? Nope. <sighs> I think of some Hearthstone cards that are twins, but uh, not not Cosmere characters. I think I'm gonna have to skip. I... Ian. I'm going to skip two. All right. Clue four. This character converted to Voronism. Oh. Nope. You're blanking out. Yes. <laughs> that face. <laughs> that face. It's just like, mm, I know the character, but what's their name? Is that that face? Uh, yes. I know exactly who it is, but I don't know the name. Who is it? It's, I mean, it's, I don't want to. They're not. They're all right. All right. All right. It's, 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 it's one of Rock's children. Oh. It's the male. Oh. It's a boy. Um, they're not twins though, are they? Yeah. There's two of them are twins. As opposed to three of them being twins. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hard hitting analysis um, you get on Sharkas is like, yeah, there's two twins. Whoa, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Vex. I'm, I'm going to guess Rock. The other Rock. The Little Rock? No. Yep. I thought the Little Rock was a girl. Uh, well, like, it's not uh, It's not, not Beautiful rock. Song. This Beautiful Song is a girl. The Daughter. Yes, it is not beautiful song. I don't remember the names of his children. Um, Are they? Dang it. Okay, I'm I'm gonna Thanks. give clue five. This is one of Lunamore's sons. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Which, I know. Which uh, I'm very tempted to give it to you, Joshua. But I would give it. All to right. Him. You 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 have identified which character it is. That character's name is Gift. Gift. Mm. What was the clue? What? What was clue five? Did you read clue five? Yeah, that's yeah. Luna Moore's son. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh Luna Moore's son was the clue. Yeah, that was the clue. Yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hadn't have twigged on that in clue four, then it's then that would have been helpful. You just had figured yeah. that out already. That's, yeah. Right? That was an excellent one. That 
And, and I'll give that to you because it's not like Gift had much screen time. <laughs> so yeah, that's about, about a paragraph. Yeah. So that, that's. Yeah. He helped, yeah. uh, he helped give out water. He did. Yep. Yeah. That's the, uh, yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Shardcast where, uh, Evgeny continues to be shrouded in darkness on video due to his lighting. <laughs> Like, literally, you need to, like, get a light, dude. Well, so here's the thing, right? My monitor actually plays a huge role in this. Yeah. No, I figured. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. My, mine, too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can have your own light show on your face. <laughs> so I can be white or dark. That's racist. Or, I mean, I'm also white. So, or I go back to white. I'm glad my jokes might make myself laugh. Just gotta make well, some. If you laugh. can't make yourself laugh, what's the point? That's right. All right, guys. You can find all of these words of Brandon on wob.coppermine.net, and we will have way too many more of these episodes because you guys talk a lot and ask a lot of questions. But yep. we'll, we'll try and make these episodes good uh, and uh, maybe maybe space some of them out so it's not just like a month of, hey, here's some words of Brandon. Get three of them in a you're row. Gonna be, you're going to be listening to us in, in February when we do part four of <laughs> Sky. Uh, that? is Could possible <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> might be possible but yeah it, it might just be all of january maybe we'll, we'll, see. we'll I, see i exaggerate only mildly yeah we're 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 recording this much earlier than when this will air so it is it is now july no <laughs> <laughs> yeah we recorded this in july 2018 <laughs> Four months before the tour. <laughs> yeah. Five months before the tour. He, he's just doing Christmas in July. It's the thing. Some of, us, some of us haven't taken Look, down our Christmas Look, your kids are young. They don't know. Also, a month from now, this foil map will be <laughs> No one can see it because you're shrouded in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, follow us on 17 for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun everything you need come join our discord uh follow us on facebook soundcloud twitter that's not the right order whatever subscribe on youtube where you can see our faces and leave us a review on itunes and we will see you all next time bye unite them merry christmas <laughs> in oh. july in july if you're in australia <laughs> i mean yeah, Australians still celebrate Christmas <laughs> at Christmas time. It's just summer. Yeah. I know that sounds weird, but the Southern Hemisphere is weird, okay? That's They're back. Yeah, so, so there's no limit to how weird they can be. That's true. I've heard that Santa comes in on a surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> if you are one I've of heard our Australian that's viewers, thing. tell us, how does Santa deliver things in Australia? In Speedos. Yikes. Okay, let's end it. So see that. All right. We're ending it there. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Thanks for that wonderful image. <laughs>